Okay, we're streaming and recording. <laughs> okay, strictly dickly, you just said. <sighs> Explain, because you probably have to hook up with chicks. Actually, I've seen you hook up with a I bunch of chicks in front of my own eyes. For work. I mean, work. yeah, girls are pretty and they're soft, but... But you could never really want to hook up with one, or what? What are no, the rules? No, it's just not my thing. I don't know. I like, I like cock. Yeah, I mean, everybody likes cock. Well, I mean, <laughs> you most, like cock? No, no, no. Well, I like. My I could see. Yeah. I could look at one of my friends' cocks and be like, "That's a nice cock." Good looking cock. Nice veins. Nice symmetry. But okay, vaginas are weird. No. Oh yeah, super creepy. Yeah, and you. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to really take care of it. Mmm, it's like an open wound. Exactly. And so, a dick is like a fucking baseball bat. Yeah, so it's fine. You know how many times I clean this thing? Not very often. Like never. Yeah, no, but, but it's still fine. Yeah, it's totally fine. You could dip it in a, a pool of puddle water. And it'd as be long fine. as you don't have that foreskin. Oh, you gotta, I'm so you lucky gotta, my parents got rid of that. Yeah. You got to clean it out. It gets like a little cheesy. Do you have a huge preference in terms of circ or uncircumcised? I like uncircumcised for anal because it just slides in there nicely. Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. But for regular vag, I would say circumcised. Wow, so that's interesting. You're thinking about your butthole that, that intently. Well, when you're doing scenes for 30 minutes, you have to. 30 minutes of anal is standard when you get booked for a scene? Um, for an anal scene, yeah. How often do you get booked? Well, I was contracted with browsers. My contract just expired. Uh -huh. And I think I'm going to be a free agent. And, that, and so describe for the fans out there what is it like being a girl who's signed to browsers versus being a girl who's a free agent. Um, I think you can make more money being a free agent. You can book yourself, you know, four or five times a week. Whereas I work for one company, I probably shoot for them four times a month, but I prefer working less because I do Snapchat mm. and that's my main source of income. And that has completely flipped the porn Changed industry on its head. the fucking huh? world. You know what? Now it's in our hands. It's in the women's hands. Exactly. And that's so like the, the directors holding, yeah. and the agents must be horrified, right? You know, it's our time. We've, I've paid my dues, trust me. Right. So I'm really excited where it's going now. Do you get a lot of that blowback, though? Like when you're talking to directors and when you're talking to agents, are they pissed off about the fact that you're making way more money on Snapchat than you are doing traditional uh, scenes, which is they're getting their cut? I sense it, but they never say anything to me. Um, for example, my contract is up and they just assumed I wouldn't want to sign because, because they I'm see you making going hard more. with it. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I'm going to do things here and there for other companies, but they're going to be more larger scale for promo reasons, mm -hmm. not really for money, monetary reasons. Right. So let's let's go back to the, the full story and everything. So where were you born? Miami. Miami, mm. which is a hot cesspool of porn activity, huh? I mean, I guess there's just hot people there all the time. But, but that's, that's where browsers look at, right? No, they're located in actually Canada. Oh, really? Yeah, but they have most of their directors here, a couple in Vegas and a couple in Miami. Okay. There's I'm, not I'm a just thinking about Bang porn. Bros. When I think Bang Bros, I you think... You think of Miami. Right. And is Bang Bros Brazzers or no? No, that's oh, a different okay. company. God, I'm so out of the loop. <laughs> it's okay. Skills, I'm surprised so. you even know as much as you do, honestly. Yeah, I'm trying. I, I don't really watch porn. People probably no? always assume that I do. Hmm. Well, I watched some of yours today. I had to do a little research. And? It was excellent. Thank you. Big fan of your work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hadn't actually like noticed yet that when you're on Pornhub that they have the lines where things skip. And I like, I was like, oh shit, the, the line. I'm going to move to this line. All of a sudden, boom, you're just planting your butt down on this guy's face. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he's just gobbling away. You know, Technology. as you do. <laughs> as you do. <laughs> okay, so you're from Miami. What was your, your, what were your early years like, your upbringing? Um, wasn't super close with my family. Um, got a job working at Walgreens mm -hmm. as a manager at a young age. And that's where the whole porn idea came from. Working work at Walgreens can often yeah. lead to that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I feel you, man. I was working overnights and oh. overnights are rough. You have nothing to do, nothing to think about. So I would just go in the office and search porn as you do. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know what? A lot of these girls are not that hot. I could totally do this. Right. So I looked up porn agent. Had you always felt in touch with your sexuality to the extent that you might be interested in doing this it sort of thing? It was never really a thought. I don't know. I just kind of went with it, you know? Because some girls, I feel like, my, my instincts about the porn game is that some girls are just so into having sex. Mm -hmm. Like so, so I, I look at Riley Reed. I'm good friends with Riley. I don't really think Riley could have ended up doing anything in her life besides being a porn star. Really? Because she's that sexual. She loves fucking so much that it's like, if she had became a secretary, 
she probably would have been the secretary who was like, you well, know. Well, you know what? We're all sexual. It's just some of us choose to do it on camera. I feel like some girls are just, I think it has a lot to do with the vagina. If a girl is easily able to like come, come over yeah. and over, a you lot know, of times, you know, boom, I they're don't just, they gravitate true. to it. I've met so many girls in the industry that are like, I cannot come. Right. And I'm like, oh, girl, I'm sorry. You're in the wrong industry. Really? Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe it's like hopes of like someone can make them come. Mm. That's really interesting. Yeah, I guess there's different types. Well, I mean, the, you also have girls who are hustlers, mm -hmm. straight up. Like, I, I've met girls in the industry who I was like, holy shit, you would be, like, selling keys of Coke yeah. if you... So that's me now, but I'm also... selling keys of Coke right no. now. What are your prices like? I have a guy over here. <laughs> no, I'm the hustler now, but I wasn't always that way. I think when I got in the industry, it was more, I was the slut. Mm. I just liked having sex. And I still do like having sex. I'm blessed. I love my job especially Snapchat, because now I get to, I have this thing where I'll go on dating apps mm. and I end up going on a date with a guy, convincing him to go on my Snapchat. So it's fun for me. It's always someone different. Obviously I get them tested, but obviously, obviously, how do you do that on a first date? No, I have a first date with them. Oh, and then, then I you convince feel them, them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but see, this is interesting to me because don't you have to get forms and like 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 signatures if you're gonna well, film someone? I or? have them fill out a standard model release form. Okay, just in case. And so, is a large percentage of the, you just meet guys off what is it Tinder or Bumble or Raya uh, or what is it? Tinder and Hinge are like my. What's Hinge? Another dating app. Does it have any particular? Is it for like? Whores, no, slutty ass it's, people. <laughs> it's actually uh, more professionals. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Because I I've actually want to meet a guy. Mm. I want a consistent dick to have on my Snapchat. Right. Yeah. I want to have like an assistant who I fuck, who I like. Right. That's, I think all girls want that. Yeah, but don't you feel like you're going to end up in some fucking Me Too heat for that? Like just think so? hiring an employee to not only be your assistant, but also fuck you. That's, no, that's going to be a no, no, weird no, no. contract. I want to date someone who loves me, uh -huh. who does things for me as an assistant would do. Uh, yeah, out of the kindness of his heart, but has his own shit going on. Mm. Well, you seem like you're looking for something kind of different when Magical. it comes to relationships. <laughs> well, when you were asking me, you were asking me about my friends and like, you know, who do you think would be yeah. a good person for me to date or whatever. Number one thing you said is like, no drugs. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if this conversation needs what? to keep going. Come on. And you were like, you know, it just sounded like you were looking for like a, a sort of subservient guy. Not necessarily but i am i live a healthy lifestyle i don't know i'm into it right you're into it that's yeah. kind of how i feel now too is like i'm too healthy that it's hard for me to imagine dating a chick who wants to go to the club four or five times a week exactly like it's not attractive yeah i mean it's cool because when you're that young and you can just do that but then as you get older i feel like me and you are probably in kind of similar spaces where it's like oh shit like our ability to make money doing the thing that we're doing right now as you get older, you start to realize, like, okay, maybe this won't last forever. I got to go hard. Hustle, yeah. yeah. So I don't have time to, like, I don't like getting fucked up. I like waking up early. I start hustling. I do my work. I work out. And then I'm tired. Right. I just want to cuddle with someone, maybe film some Snapchat. and But I want them to do their own work during the day. You can't just, mm. like, rely on me. Yeah, see, that's got to be weird for a girl who has a lot going on. And it's kind of the same way from my perspective is that there's been times where I've like almost ended up dating girls or like have spent time around girls where it becomes pretty clear that there's such an imbalance that I'm so much busier than them yeah. and have like more going on and they have nothing going on. So it's like, why don't they just hang out? Honestly, my current relationship was a little bit like that in the beginning, but then she created her own world. Yeah, she's a fucking hustler now. Right. Yeah. But it is hard because I did start dating someone uh, maybe six months ago and he just didn't have as much going on mm -hmm. and then was really clingy. And I don't like that. We each need to have things going on. Mm -hmm. Do you find like guys, they start to date you. Mm -hmm. You've got millions of followers. They probably don't. You've got money. They probably don't. And all of a sudden it's just like they are cloud chasing. Like they yeah. want to be with you because they see you as being able to elevate where they are at in life. I don't, a little bit. It's like, oh, you don't love me. Post me on your Instagram. And it's like, mm. yeah, yeah, no, maybe if we're married one day. Right. Because that's a huge decision for you. It's bad for your yeah, brand. Bad, exactly. bad for your business. I mean, I guess people would understand, but I want to make sure it's something serious. Right. Not someone that's just cloud chasing. So didn't, did you have a long-term boyfriend? There's, you've had a lot of like interesting relationships throughout your porn career, right? Uh -huh, yeah. 
Let's talk about it. When did the first one start? Or uh, should we just go from Walgreens to porn? Let's connect well, those okay. dots. Okay, Walgreens to porn. I mean, I was at Walgreens for probably a year. Okay. I was dating a guy, and I'm like, all right, peace out. I'm going. A manager? No, no. Oh, okay. Actually, I did date one of the managers, but that wasn't like a serious relationship. Would you consider yourself a slut at this point in your life? Were you? What, what was, was your sex slutty. life like? Yeah, were you underage? I mean, How old were you at this time? We're going to I was 18. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I was 18. I would go out to the club and like bring home girls for my boyfriend and make him fuck them in the ass because I didn't like anal. Wow. Yeah. Were you actually into that or was he just a weirdo who was asking you to do that? I was into it. He didn't want to do it. He's like, oh, come on. You wanted yeah. to bring home girls yeah. for him? Yeah. Wow. Okay. I wanted him to treat them badly, though. Why? Wow, that turned you on? Yeah. Does that still uh, appeal to you? No. Now I want to like have a threesome with two guys and just me. Really? Maybe the guys touch each other. Touch each other? Yeah, why not? Hey, yo. <laughs> 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 but, okay. That have you do you do that in your personal life? I haven't done that yet at all. No, holy shit. I know I got a whole bunch of guys over here. They're gonna touch each other, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. I won't tell anyone. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's cool. You can tell me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely put that on their uh, their report at the end of the year. <laughs> okay, so you were, but you were basically like living like you know, a, I was a little slutty, a deviant sexual lifestyle. To an extent. You know what? I feel like most people are like this. But who is the boyfriend that is is actually mad about having to fuck some random girls in the I ass? I mean, he wasn't mad, but he just like wasn't really like into them, and you know, uh -huh. like and treat them badly. All right, fuck her in the ass. He's like, oh come on. I would be weirded out if my girlfriend was like, hey, here's this girl that you've never even met. Like, fuck her really nasty. Like, I would be like, Jesus Christ, we got. Well, get you some don't want to treat your girlfriend badly. <sighs> but don't a lot of girls like that? I don't. Not. Badly, no. but you know, a lot of girls want to be choked up. and no. spit on and everything. No, 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 you don't. Do You're not into me. that. No, no, you were no. never into that. Maybe when I was younger. Now I'm not. You're I'm, definitely the alpha male. Yeah, a hundred percent. My my cock is bigger than most. Right, but when you do porn, they want the guy to use you like a fucking toilet, right? When I was younger, now I call the shots. And yeah. Okay, so what was your, what were your early days of getting into porn like? First scene. Let's talk about it. Ron Jeremy walks into the room. Oh, gross. <gasps> I forget. Shots. <laughs> Shots Sorry, fired. Ron. <laughs> Sorry, Ron, but no. Everyone says he smells. Really? Yeah. I would never say such a thing. He's one of my idols. Is he? I mean, sure, why not? <laughs> not, not, not until right now, but. <laughs> um, My first scene, I think it was with this gross older guy named Ed Powers. Oh. And he always gets, like, the girl's first scene. Yeah. Yeah. And doesn't he always, like, he's, like, the nastiest Super dude on earth? He's so nice, though. His personality is so nice. So and it's just acting? No, he's not, like, he's just, like, gross looking. Oh, I'm thinking of Max Hardcore. Oh, okay. Let me tell you a story. Okay. So I had emailed um, the agent, and I'm like, listen, I want to do porn. I sent him my pictures, Polaroids. This is a long time ago. Uh -huh. And he's like, yeah, come out to L.A. I'm going to book you with... Ma what was his name? Max Hardcore. Max Hardcore. I just remember him from high school that we had one of his videos and he was, he was doing like the casting couch thing and yeah. saying the worst things. We're like 16 watching it like horrified. Yeah. No. So I had the brain to say, you know what? I'm going to look him up before I go work with this guy. Mm -hmm. Looked him up on LimeWire at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Six days later, the download was complete. Yeah. And I'm like, no fucking way. Call up this agent. Listen, I want to come out to L.A., but I'm not working with him or anyone like him because that's not what I'm going to do. Just because he was ugly or something? Dude, you've seen his porn. It's fucking nuts. I'm not doing that shit. I'm not getting pissed on and treated like shit. Like, he was just not so what I want to do. day one, you were acting bougie. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I said no. And I put him in this place, and he never booked me with anyone bad. Uh, but I did work with this, like, fat, older guy for my first scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I didn't mind it because he was really nice. He was. So when you're doing a scene, does it is it is the standards for enjoying it a lot different than when you're having sex on the outside? I mean, yeah, it's completely different. You can still find enjoyment in it, but <coughs> it's just different. It's work enjoyment. Like you still enjoy your work, but it's still work. Right. So were you all in like from the beginning? Were you like, I'm yeah. just going to do this all the time? Yeah. My agent was like, Are you sure you don't want to come out and just do one thing and see if you like it? I'm like, No, no, I'm just going to move out there. It's fine. Grabbed all my shit, moved out there. And like, were you totally confident or was this just like yeah. blind, foolish no, yeah. youthfulness? No, I loved it. Like, yeah, it just happened and I loved it. Uh huh. That's just my personality though. I'm just like, All right, I'm going to hop into it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to fucking kill it. Right. With anything I do. Yeah, you just go for it. Do you, yeah. In retrospect, do you feel like you didn't think about it enough? 
I feel like I wish I would have known that it sticks around forever. Mm. The internet back then was not like it is now. Well, you were on LimeWire, so it was definitely different. Yeah, now. it was definitely different, but I still wouldn't take it back. I would still do it, but I wish I would have known, and I would tell people it's never going anywhere. Uh-huh. You're always going to stay prevalent. Has so. that ever, like, occurred to you? Like, oh, maybe I, I uh, you know, that, that this is, like, a real... Have you ever tried to do anything else with your life where that might have been an issue? Like, if you go to try to become a doctor or something like that. I mean, I feel like people are getting... Yeah, it was it was tough. I did try and get out of it for a while. I was with a guy and I wanted to be a real estate agent. But you know what? I came back and I really I enjoy what I do. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do anything else right now. So but it never goes away. Right. Yeah. So do you go straight from working at Walgreens to all of a sudden having money and you're well I always had money. I always had money. I was making Walgreens. I was making forty thousand a year plus bonuses with no education. Okay. I had savings. Like I never wanted for anything. Okay. So I didn't so live you were that life. Yeah. You didn't get into porn because you were broke. I never got into porn because I was broke. It was just more of like this is entertaining for me. Right. Yeah. And then you were just. I, I feel like certain girls are just like you know. Apparently, I'm the kind of person who doesn't mind having sex on camera, so I might as well do it because I feel like the majority of people are like, oh, I could never have sex on camera. So if a girl figures out that she doesn't mind it that much, it's like, oh shit, well. Why okay, not? so in my head, I always wanted to be a model, mm. but I'm five foot. I was going to say, you're a so little short for that. Huh? <laughs> this to me was like, oh, this is the next thing, right? Mm. It's just sex. Also, I never... when you were 18, you got into the game. Were you like super skinny little? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Really thin. Yeah. Yeah. Because well, now people look at you and they're like, oh, well, I'm not surprised she became a porn star. But at the time, it probably. I feel like I've had two careers. Mm. Like I had the career when I was younger looking and really thin and then I got out of it for a couple years came back with ass and all this extra stuff and I'm like it, I look completely different and it worked for me in my benefit right. because I've had two separate careers and I've it's given me the longevity in this industry that most people I don't think have because mm. I don't think I'm at that point where I look like a milf I just look like a different girl. Mm-hmm. So yeah. if we were to look at your porn from all the way back then was it the same name? And was it like, if we looked at it, would we be like, holy shit, you could barely recognize her? I mean, it still looks like me, but I look really young. I'm really thin. Right. Yeah. Okay. Definitely what, what, thicker now. What was the story you were just telling? I don't know. What? God damn it. I don't know. You were talking <laughs> about something about getting into the game or I forget. I jump all over the place. Yeah. we It'd be like that on here. Um, <laughs> Okay. So entering the porn world. So you what? You just post up in LA and just live out here for a few years and you're just, you're just going hard. Living. Yeah. And you enjoyed it? You appreciated the lifestyle? Oh, of course. Okay. And so then at what point do you meet this guy that takes you out of the game? Um, I met him when I was living, because I moved from LA to Vegas when I was like 25. Okay. Just because I really wanted to save money. It's cheaper to live out there. I would drive here and then drive back. Met him at a pool party. And then I'm very much like my personnel is just like, oh, I'm just going to go for it. Uh-huh. We fell in love. Um, he lived in Miami. That's where I'm from. You're like back home. And go I'm like, oh, perfect. Okay. So move out there and it just didn't end up working out. But how many years were you in this relationship? Probably two. Okay. Yeah, not super long. But then I was just like, all right, I'll get back into it. But he was Captain Sabaho. He was trying to get you out the game? No, not necessarily. He didn't say anything until we were kind of together for a few months before he was like, hey, do you not want to shoot anymore? Can you not shoot anymore? So it wasn't that he was disgusted by it. It was more like no. he was, he wanted to know if you were kind of feeling that you yeah, might yeah, want to yeah. get out of it. No, I've never had anyone like, no, I'm not a captain save a ho type girl. You're not attracted to dudes who want to save girls? No, no, no. Doesn't that normally happen? Because I always hear about that from porn girls. They're like, every dude seems like they're super cool with it. And then all of a sudden, six months later, it's like, so I don't want you to get gang banged anymore. I mean, I get it, but I don't think that's what they're looking to do. Mm. You know, you start having feelings for someone and you don't want to see them get gangbanged. Right. Maybe you do. Maybe some of you do. Were you doing crazy shit when you first got into porn and stuff? Or was there anything really insane that you did that we don't know about or that I don't know about? Mm. I would do blow bangs. Right. How many guys? I don't know. I'd have to look it up. Maybe like six at a time. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's nothing compared to Gina Valentina told us about like, I forget it was like 
10 plus and Ooh. she was describing holding it all in her mouth and then how when she swallowed Ooh. it she got sick it's from all swallowing. different textures because you know everyone <laughs> you <laughs> i heard someone puke in the background <laughs> because you know everyone has like a slightly different color or odor and like texture and you don't really realize until you're they're all next to each other because i didn't take them all in my mouth first it'd like all be in a cup and then you're looking at it and you're comparing them all and it's yeah do you think different races have different types of cum you know, it's not based on racial lines. No, I think it's just really just different guys. I think it's it's health. I think it's like how you yeah, eat. I think it's yeah. a lot. I it's, think it's also like if you've not came in a while, mm. you know, it's like that thicker. I like the thinner consistency with like zero smell. Zero smell. So there's a lot of smells going on? Yeah. Ugh. Normal. Okay, normal cum smells like chlorine. Chlorine? Yeah, or like bleach. You never smell when you came. I mean, I guess I have. I've been there. So, but I would not at all say it reminds me of like going to a pool. I would. Really? Yeah. And then if it's I feel like, like you're smelling something different because you're on the other end of it. No, because other people have said the same thing. I can't okay, be wrong. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so normal cum smells like chlorine. Yeah, what, yeah. And then what are the other subdivisions? If it just smells rank, there's you. Maybe you have gonorrhea. Maybe you should go somewhere. Mm. Yeah. The one time I got gonorrhea, that was how I found out. Oh, is the smell? No, the girl swallowed it, and she was like, "There's something going on with that." Oh, really? Was that bad? I've never. I didn't know. She she said it, and then all of a sudden, I started thinking like, "Wait, I do feel weird." Like, oh yeah, yeah. Maybe I do have something. Go to the doctor, get checked the next day. Well, actually, I didn't get checked. I just got shot in my ass. I just assumed that I probably had it. Assumed. Okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah, because I've had girls tell me that my cum tastes like weed. Maybe you smoke a lot of weed. I do, but have you encountered this? Um, I don't smoke a lot of weed, so I couldn't tell you if something mm. tasted like weed. As long as it doesn't taste like I want to vomit. Mm. Yeah. I'm not a big swallower, though. Really? No, I'm like a, I'll have it in my mouth and then dribble it out the side. You seem like a real handful to date. <laughs> like, you're not like the I average. I am the most. <laughs> right. I, I feel like the average porn star that I know uh -huh. prides themselves on a lot of stuff like, you know, being able to just swallow cum. Like I'm going to tell you something. Let's I think it's it. fake. I think that girls, not all girls, but majority, they have this job and they put on a persona and they think that they have to be, oh, I love cum. I love this. I like fucking. I don't want to swallow your cum. Right. I think I'm just more honest about it. Like, oh my God, a porn star is saying that she doesn't want to swallow cum. Mm. Like, well, no one really likes <clears throat> some girls. Oh, I love getting it in my eye. <laughs> like, yeah, that's hard to believe. <laughs> that's like an injury. Yeah. <laughs> that's like blindness. Why would you choose that? I love being permanently, uh, having my vision permanently damaged by cum. Yeah, it's I great. think it's fucking fake. I don't know. Right. I mean, I feel you, but then at the same time. Because it's what guys want to hear. Maybe, but I, I feel like. I, okay, I know porn girls who I've heard talk about eating dudes' asses, and it doesn't seem like it's so much based on them really just loving I that love act. eating guys' asses. Okay, you are a special <laughs> fact, but, <laughs> but I'm saying it that... It gets me really, really wet. But it feels like some girls say they like eating guys' asses just because they are sort of trying... Like, in their head, they're so blinded by their love of cock that, to them... That loving eating ass is a representation of how much they... Well, what do you like about it? Tell me. I, I don't know. I think I just like that it's taboo. And, like, mm. I like... I only like it when a guy doesn't want you to touch his ass. And then it's a game That's to me. That's me right there, yeah. Yeah. So, for example, if you meet a girl who's like, oh, I don't do anal. All of a sudden, you want to get your dick in her ass, right? It's a game. As a younger man, perhaps. As I got older, the anal thing just seems a lot well, you know, less taboo like and less crazy. No, I feel you. Yeah, though, if yeah. a girl doesn't want to do something, now it's your goal to get her to do something. So for me, if a guy's like, oh, I don't really like my ass played with, I'm like, okay, now it's a game. Mm. And I'm going to get you to, first I'm going to lick it. And then eventually there's going to be something that goes in it. Oh, God. Yeah. That's your thing? Yeah. Whoa. So even any guy you date has to at some point expand his asshole? I can safely say that any guy I've ever dated has let me stick something in his ass. Now I'm looking at your fingernails. They don't look too crazy, though. <laughs> <laughs> if you got the long ass acrylics, if you got Cardi B nails, you definitely got to stay away. Oh, no. I'm talking toy. Oh, yeah. Okay. So not fingers? That's too gross? No, I mean, I'll start with a tongue, and then I, like, convince them that they're going to have the best orgasm ever if they let me. Then I take them to the sex These store. These suckers. These dudes <laughs> just falling for your bullshit. 
I take them to the sex store. We pick out a toy together. It's fun. It's wow. an experience. It really sounds like you're just leading these dudes around like a fucking <laughs> dog on a leash. Just, no, it'll be fun. Yes, we're going to tear your booty open. See, my problem, to be honest with it, is that the first times that I've ever had my ass eaten by my girlfriend was when I was drunk as shit. Mm-hmm. So being drunk... She goes and tries to do it. Boom. I'm letting her do it. Uh-huh. It's fine. Then she tries to do it when I'm sober. Uh-huh. And it tickles so bad as she's getting close to it that I can't even like be serious enough really? to do it. And I just start giggling. That sounds... I don't know. Every guy that I've had, they love it. She's trying to put her finger in there, too. And I'm just not feeling it. <laughs> I'm like, no. Because you want to know what really convinced me is I had a colonoscopy a few months ago. That's different. Well, I had the doctor's finger in there. And the whole time that he has his finger in my ass, I'm just thinking, nope. Never letting anybody do this for That's any reason. That's different, though. No, no, no. Like, no. imagine, like, your dick is being stroked while, like, her tongue is on. It feels good. You no, like, I've done that. I've okay. had her lick the ass. I just don't really want anything in there. It just seems like too much to bite off. <laughs> and not literally bite off. It just seems like a lot. Like, I just don't. I don't know. I, I feel like there's something that happens as you get older, for me, for me at least, where it's like, I've made it this far. I don't want to. Made it this far without getting fucked in the ass. You know, okay, one time I was reading a little interview thing with 50 Cent, and they were asking what he thought of anal, uh-huh. and he goes, man, we ain't in prison, we don't got to do that. Ooh. And I was just like, you know what, that is kind of like how I'm thinking of it, too, is like, we're in this like world of softness, and ice cream, and yogurt, and it's just everything is nice, and we have frilly blankets, and stuff like that, and then you want me... To put something in my fucking poop hole? Like, I mean, why? if you don't enjoy it, you don't enjoy it. But I'm all about like doing whatever you enjoy. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> so you take a few years off yeah. from porn, and during that time, you're just doing the real estate thing? No, I tried to. Oh. I tried to, meaning I got my license. Okay. That was it. And then proceeded to sell zero houses. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what, what do you? To what do you owe that? Do you think that you just weren't talented at it, or? You get fed up. I didn't even try, honestly. Was yeah. it, were you just like kind of living off this dude who had a shitload of money? So you were like, no, you had like it's, fake it's aspirations. A, it's you a, didn't really want to do it. It's a whole long story that I'm not going to get into today. But no, I definitely always made my own money and I had savings in my account. Um, the real estate thing was actually after I left him, I didn't jump right back into porn. I was like, all right, cool. I'm an adult now. I'm going to sell some real estate. I got my license. Um, and then I knew someone in a, who owned a large condominium, and I thought that he was just going to put me on his board to sell condos there because it was a huge condo. But then he tried to like, oh, well, you know, I'll have you on here if, you can, if you'll fuck me. And I was really offended by that. Mm. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. Because you're in the porn world, and then all of a sudden you try to get into the real estate world, and you realize that everybody's even worse of a worse. porn ball, right? They're worse. The por- porn is so honest. You, so you haven't ran into a lot of the uh, fuck me and I'll give you this opportunity type stuff that we're used no. to hearing about in Hollywood and porn? No, because porn is so honest. Like, okay, you're going to go on set. You're going to have sex. This is what you're going to do. So no one's hitting on you or being weird. Like, you're literally just there to do your job. Right. Yeah. So I just find it a lot more honest. Right. I'm not into that whole like, oh, you do. I don't know. I don't like creepy shit. Right. Well, when you're at like the AVNs or, you know, when you're at the the porn awards type stuff, it is kind of like you're around all these people that are so legendary and so known for nothing but having sex. But people don't seem that concerned with sex because everybody is having so much sex by default. Exactly. It's kind of a different vibe. I I thought that I was going to the AVNs and that I was going to be busting out different threesome every night and stuff. No. And you, you probably could if you, you dedicated could, yourself to it, yeah. but it's not just that there's sex occurring everywhere it's around you. It's not as prevalent as most people would think. Mm. And I run into people all the time. They're like, oh, well, you're a porn star. You just want to have sex all the time with everyone. I'm like, no, I get tested and I probably am less slutty than most people, most girls that you see at the club. Mm. You, cause you would never take me home from a club. Right. You're not that kind of girl. No, I mean, I do it for my job. Like, I enjoy it, but like, I'm not trying to just go home with random people who are untested. Yeah, I seen a meme one time that was said something like, oh, you know, you're hating on girls for, uh, you know, taking their, you know, fucking for money. You're out here fucking for a text back. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. There are a lot of girls who are in the nightclub every night, whatever, who are hating on girls that Super are hating. doing Snapchat oh or porn God. or whatever. And it's like, you're just throwing that pussy at whoever the fuck every night. Like, I mean, and a lot of those girls are the ones who are going to get fed up with it at a certain point and just realize, like, maybe I should monetize yeah. this thing. 
Or never. Um, there or, are just yeah. so many girls that are looking for sugar daddies. And I know so many Instagram models that won't do photo shoots with me and are super snotty about like their shout for shout and stuff because I'm a porn star and they don't want to be associated. Really? But I know that they're fucking escorts. Bro. So it sucks sometimes, but at the same time, what are you going to do? Right. Let's get back into escorting in one second. I just have to give a shout out to our sponsor, Eagle Energy. You ever hit a caffeine caffeine pen before? No, I'm super sensitive to caffeine. <laughs> I'll be lit. That thing is intense. It Ooh. is an all-natural plant-based caffeine inhaler pen, and it is fast-acting. It gets into your system immediately. Let me just tell you all about it. Um, as opposed to drinking coffee and energy drinks that sometimes can take 30 to 45 minutes to kick in, there's no jitters or crash. Uh, it gives you a nice energy boost, and it improves your cognitive performance, focus, and mood. And if you want to get it, all you have to do is go to www.eagle.energy and use promo code NOJUMPER22 for a special 22 off. That's right, eagle.energy, no.com. .energy is the end of the URL. And yeah, quite frankly, I've grown quite fond of these things. We've done a few advertisements for them, and they really do. It, it tastes good, and we will be leaving it here just in case you do want to experiment with the dark uh, right. caffeine arts. <laughs> okay, um, moving on. So escorting, have you ever uh, tried it yourself or no? I have. I do not currently escort, and I have nothing against people who do. Um, I just don't like to be judged by people who do it secretly and then are like, oh, you're a porn star. I can't be associated with you when you're doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So so when you did it, how did it work? Because I feel like I've heard about it from enough girls in the porn world that it's kind of looked at as sort of like a safe thing because of the fact, tell me if I'm wrong, that there are just like established clients that will hire girls and stuff. So it's like the same base of dudes. Who I are didn't really get super deep into it. It was when I first got into the industry, uh, a director friend of mine was like, hey, I have this friend and I'm like, oh, so it's escorting. And she's like, yeah, but it's the same thing that you're doing. And I'm like, all right, cool. Kind of dabbled in it for a few months. And then I was like, it's kind of creepy for me. I don't want to just like go see. I mean, I love my fans, but it just doesn't seem super safe to me. And I Does like it to feel be different than doing it on camera. Um, yeah, I just. I get freaked out by meeting people I've never met before. Mm. I don't really like to put myself in dangerous situations. So it wasn't just like the same guy over and over. It was just like, different. I only saw a few people, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, but would you say that on average that the average girl in porn is doing it? You know, it's all across the board. It just depends. I know a lot of porn girls who don't, I know a lot who do. I also know a lot who feature dance, a lot who don't. It's just preference. A lot of girls who cam a lot that don't. There's so many different ways to make money, but it just depends on what you're into. And yeah, so I don't feature dance and I don't escort now because it's not my thing. If you see a girl on her Instagram and she's on a yacht, uh -huh. what are the odds that she's escorting? Or she just knows a guy with a yacht? Most of those girls are not even getting paid. They're just sucking dick to go on a yacht. Really? Yeah, it's sad. Wow, that is sad. Super sad. I don't even want to go on a yacht. Somebody can invite me on a yacht tomorrow. I'm not going. I mean, I would rather just pay for the yacht and not have to... Be, I don't know. For me, it's like I like having sex, but I don't like hanging out with people that I don't like. Mm. I can have sex with anyone, but I can't hang out with someone for more than 10 minutes if I don't like you. Yeah. So I couldn't go on a fucking vacation with someone. That was the part like towards the end of my single career, which has been over for a few years. Uh, that was really what was kind of getting at me was like just growing irritated enough that I felt like. What I had been previously doing where it was normal for me to just go on a date with some girl that I don't know shit about and sit there and entertain her for a couple hours or whatever just to try to have sex. That yeah. made sense to me in my earlier life. And all of a sudden now, you know, it's just like I don't want to fucking have to pretend to be That's into what somebody. It is. I'm not good at pretending or being fake. I'm very mm. honest. If I don't like you, I don't want to hang out with you. Right. So that's just I wish like. Probably I would have a lot more money if I could do that right. or a sugar daddy, but I'm just not into it. So are you the queen of just saving money? Or are you just like really good at that? Yeah. Really? Yeah. What are your expenses? I mean, my car. I spend a lot of money on food, but like I don't buy expensive clothing or shoes. Like, You're I'm not just... into the designer game? Not really. Are those Uggs? Yeah. 
<laughs> I mean, that's not really, <laughs> that's not like Louboutins. Like I never no, wear no, heels. No. I live in like workout clothing. All I do is work out and make money and eat vegan food. A lot of people start to make, you know, a lot of people cross the $100,000 a year barrier. And then they're like, oh shit. Now any money I make past this barrier, I can spend on Gucci. Yeah, no, I'm not into it. Maybe when I was younger, but I'm going to be 34 in June. And I just, I want to buy a house. I want to, I know that this is not going to last forever. I want to invest my money wisely. I want to be a millionaire and I want to be comfortable. I don't want to have to worry about things. Do you see yourself getting out of porn because you have to, or are you trying to like create the circumstances in which you could get out of it and... Why does everyone want to have time. this like exit strategy? I, I love. So you don't think about the exit strategy? No. Would, I w- would you be happy doing porn if you were 50? I mean, if I looked good, yeah. I mean, hey, you're probably going to look better than the average 50 year old. Yeah, fuck it. I don't see it as like, oh, I got to get out. I need an exit strategy. I'm saving my money because, you know, who knows how long they'll want me. Mm. But I'll probably just continue to do my Snapchat. I'm really enjoying it right now. I really like where I am with it right now. I'm just building on it. Um, I'll invest and I'll continue to do that. And, you know, one day if it happens that I just, you know, don't want to do it anymore, then I'll have my money making money for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not really like, oh, I got to get out. I enjoy it. I I would want to find somebody who would do my Snapchat with me Mm -hmm. and like be a team. But I don't want to pay them either. They can have their own thing. Going. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be independently wealthy and have a nine inch. You dick. don't. You know what? You don't have to be independently wealthy. You just have to be able to take care of yourself. Where I don't have to pay for your shit. And generational wealth is okay too. If you get it from your dad, that's fine, right? I mean, I don't. Oh, ca- no, that's you a turn can, off. I don't care. Okay. Yeah, as long you. I could, can't fuck with people like that. It, it, it's a challenge. It only matters how you treat me. Right. You could be a serial killer, as long as you treat me good. You really mean that? Yeah, honestly. Like, they could be a serial killer. So your whole life is going to be based <laughs> on just avoiding knowledge. Like, you're committing a crime by being I'm involved not, in this. And okay, who's to I'm say just, he's not going to kill you? All right, all right, all right. Okay. So not a serial killer. Okay, I just got done with the Ted Bundy thing. So I'm, <laughs> my mind is on serial killers. Um, just, yeah, you just have to be able to take care of yourself. I don't want to contribute to any of your shit. Take care of yourself. Treat me well. You can drive a fucking Toyota. I don't give a fuck. Mm. Have goals. That's real, though? Yeah. Toyota's okay. Yeah. Okay. Just have goals. Don't be lazy. Mm. And, you know, help me with my Snapchat. You know, film it every once in a while. Hey, let me blow you in the car. Film it. Let's my go girl on. is never happier than when I just, like, get turned on, like, extra turned on. Like, damn, you look hot. Grab my phone. Just film some, some yeah, Snapchat stuff. Yeah, I heard you never want to film shit, huh? That's so not true. I just, you know, <laughs> she, I think she doesn't want to ask me because... She's like asked me and had me like be like nah enough mm-hmm. times that she's like oh, see I'll ask and annoy the shit out of people yeah so yeah. she realizes that I'm very picky about when I want to film anything oh, I know God. it's bad uh, well, what I do and what I did with my ex because he always be like oh you know when are we just gonna have regular sex and so I'm you're doing this like the majority of the time no I mean like two times a week hmm. that's not bad I could do that if that was like required required two times a week and then i do girl girl shows and then solo shows as a boyfriend i'm thinking maybe like once a month no okay (laughs) you know what then i would tell you i'd say okay baby well then i have to go fuck other people so Mm. i'm just gonna go find someone else to do my snapchat you're cool with that right Mm -hmm. okay yeah go ahead my girl doesn't have that in her uh, her arsenal. She's never busted that one She's out. She's on a me. Gemini. I'm surprised. We're both Gemini's, so we should be similar. You guys are opposite personality types because you're this domineering, yeah. just you're trying to rule the world. Yeah. And she's very soft and nice. Uh, so she's not But she's we both have the flakiness in us. The flakiness? Why? Yeah, we're super flaky. I don't think she's flaky. I think she's so on top of shit. Well, <laughs> we make all the plans uh, and we both do it to each other. Like Oh, actually, can I, let's not do this. But you know who deals with my car insurance, my health insurance? Oh, no, we're on top of shit. But I'm saying we're flaky when it comes to making um, other plans with other people. We're not the best. Well, she's in a weird position now, too. And I like that we haven't named her. That's kind of cool. As if anybody (laughs) doesn't know. Well, I don't know. I've never (laughs) been on your show. So I'm like, I don't know what I can and can't say. Oh, it's cool. Let's just announce our name. I guess it's a big mystery. Um. The thing that has been sort of weird, and I've been through this in my life many times as a streamer and as a poker player, et cetera, is that when you have something that you can do on your own time that is very profitable. Oh, you tend to not. It can be yeah. really hard to, to then start to balance your life. Because say <laughs> say you on average can earn you know 
three hundred dollars on on average on cam or something like that or every hour that you put into your snapchat you know you're going to be essentially profiting mm -hmm. this amount it then becomes kind of hard to go to the club because you're thinking like oh so i'm going to spend tonight going to the club for five hours and probably spend a hundred bucks or you know you're a girl so probably not thinking like that but or you could stay in the house and do the cam thing, and mm -hmm. at the end of the night, boom, you got however yeah, much I, money. All I want to do is work. It can be very hard to then create that division in your brain of like having fun versus being profitable. I think I do a good job at it because I have a, a schedule. Mm. I wake up, I work out, I come back home, I get ready, I film promo, I film the video, post it all up. Everything is up by 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. 5.30, it's the end of my day. Really? Yeah. So what, how do you typically spend your evenings? Hanging out with my dog, maybe a friend, Netflix. Netflix. Yeah. What have you been watching on there lately? I just started Versace. Okay. Yeah, it's good. I watched the other Versace thing that came out like last year. That the OJ one? Oh, no, I watched that and I watched, yeah, 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 by the same, it's not the same show as OJ, the OJ thing. Yeah. But now they have another show about the Versace thing? Yeah, yeah, but it's the same, like, the OJ thing was last season and the Versace is this season. I don't know how much I need to know about Versace's murder. But, okay, it's not really... <laughs> Yeah, it was about that, but the characters are really good because the one guy is a serial killer, mm -hmm. and he's great. He's a great actor. Right. Try it out. Okay, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. I've been watching Punisher, too. You seen that? I started watching it, yeah. I'm not normally a comic book kind of guy, but... It's, it's pretty good. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm into it. Um, when did you start to get compared to Kim Kardashian? When I came back and I had all the ass and... Yeah. So prior to that, this had never been a thing? No, before it was Eva Longoria for a long time when she was like hot on Desperate Housewives. Or mm. whatever. Was it Desperate Housewives? Yeah. I so did you ever make any sort of attempt to look more like Kim K or was that no. just an accidental thing? It was accidental. If you look back, I think it was because Kim didn't really become famous. I was thinking that yeah, too. Yeah, because Paris was famous before her and then Kim became famous and then people were like, oh shit, you look like Kim. Right. Because I didn't know who she was before, so... I couldn't have gotten surgery to look like her. Mm -hmm. So if you look back, like we've always looked really similar in the face, maybe not the body always, right. but yeah. Have you ever met her? Uh, no, I've never met her, but I've worked with Kanye a bunch of times. Right. Yeah. How, okay. So how did you meet Kanye? Uh, his team had contacted me to shoot for Yeezy. Uh -huh. And then he came by and said hi. And I've been to their Christmas parties and lots of other things that he's invited me to. Super humble super genius guy right yeah so you never got like the the flirtatious vibe from him he's not like that he's not like that no he's so like respectful to kim to a fault like he literally is kind of quiet right a little bit awkward because he like just doesn't i don't know maybe he's See, a little awkward that's the weird thing about it is that if you listen to his music and certain things he said in interviews he's basically describing himself as like the horniest motherfucker on earth I've never gotten that from, I think he's super respectful to Kim because I think that's maybe his alter ego of what he would want to be. Mm. I think that they have a lot of crazy sex. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to tell you something because, okay, this is the thing. Kanye, if you were to just base your judgment of his sex life on his lyrics, you would think that he was constantly cheating on Kim. Okay. But what about all of the rappers that rap about all this crazy shit, but have like a girlfriend they're committed to like, um, but Kanye's different because Kanye is actually like telling you the story of his life, or at least that's how it feels. There's a lot of rappers who say I fucked 10 bitches last night and nobody who's listening actually thinks they fucked 10 bitches last uh, night. What about the guy that's dating Halsey? Uh, G easy was dating her, right? I think they are still dating. Mm, I think it's officially done. They oh. they went back and forth a little bit. Oh, I pay well, a little anyways, bit too much attention to the blogs. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very up to the date. Either way, all of his lyrics are always talking about fucking other bitches, but I think he was really committed to her at one point. So mm. who knows? It's all just, it's different. It's a different part of your life. It's work. Mm. So I don't know. You meeting Kim would be pretty epic, though. That's a photo that the internet genuinely needs. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about Kanye as a dude who supports uh, the porn community, though? Because he has certainly, I think, you know, supported the porn community and sex workers more than pretty much anybody else in terms of like that superstar music role. A lot of people sort of were criticizing his role in the Pornhub Awards last year after that all went down. What's your perspective on all that? I think it's amazing because he's making it just more socially acceptable. And even before the Pornhub Awards, he was shooting me for his clothing line, right. which is putting you know porn actors in fashion. And he's just kind of blurring all the lines, which it should be. We're people. It's just a different industry. Mm -hmm. I think we should all respect what everyone does for a living. Right. So, yeah. 
Yeah. Making it more acceptable. Yeah, you have been involved longer than that because it was the original thing was that photo of you and Nicolette, right? Yeah, I hadn't been involved with him for years and years okay. before that. Oh, so really? So I was the first porn star that he ever shot for his clothing line. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. so I didn't realize that. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty badass. Yeah. Did he tell you at all about like how he came to discover your work? He loves porn. Right. Yeah. Because he said that Black saved his marriage. Really? Didn't well, I didn't say, know that. Or was it Vixen or one of those? He said yeah. he said that it saved his he marriage. He loves porn. I was always like, what does that mean exactly? You're saying that like jerking off by yourself saved your marriage because... Well, maybe they fucked to it together. Why does it have to be him jerking off? A lot of couples fuck together. Maybe. That was just kind of hard to understand exactly what he was getting at with that. But I guess that's what Kanye does. That's what Kanye does. He misleads us. <laughs> <laughs> He's a genius. He likes to play with our heads. <laughs> um, okay, so in terms of ass... What has been the sequence of events that have led you to have the cake that you have today? Oh man, it's been a process. At one <laughs> <laughs> it's a big old thing. It's huge. Okay, I so I mean, Kim Kardashian's is probably. I, I did you think, say bigger or smaller? Um, I'm probably same size. Somewhat similar category. Yeah, yeah, same size. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was really thin, and then I got implants. Breasts. No boob implant, uh, butt implants. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, butt implants. And then I was like, okay, it's not big enough. And then I started getting injections, and I was happy. So not a fat transfer. This is all no, before no. that came out. I didn't out. have any fat. I was so skinny. Right. Then I started getting older, gaining weight, and then so the weight plus the silicone, it's like it's a thing now. Right. Yeah. So are you happy with it? I mean, I it makes me a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like that's the majority of your audience is like guys who just are really into big asses? I mean, yeah. And if they didn't know they like ass, now they like ass. I brought them around. I, yeah, I've met a lot of guys who are like, I didn't know that I needed the giant ass in my life, but now that it's great. Is it literally hard to do anal because there's just a lot to get past before yeah, the butthole? Yeah, so it's so funny because not to do it, but when people hire me for anal scenes, I'm like, are you guys even seeing where it's going? Right. Can we just like maybe put it in the pussy for a minute and just pretend it's in my ass? Right. Yeah. So you could pretend it. You no, could, you they said no. I'm joking. Of, but you could maybe like get the penis head in there. Maybe. Is it really what it's like though? You feel like an inch and a half going in there? No, I mean your you your could butt holes. Spread it. Yeah, it's yeah. just hard to see. Right. But you know what the great thing about having giant asses? No guys with small dicks hit on you. <laughs> they know it's gonna be humiliating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So I literally only have like meet guys with big dicks. Really? Yeah. See, that's what I was thinking when you were talking about the uh, meeting guys off of this uh, dating apps and stuff. Is I'm like, aren't a huge percentage of guys that you meet like don't have like Snapchat quality? Oh, dick? I find great dicks. Really? Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of gems out there. Yeah, because okay, you're not gonna hit on a girl with a big ass if you have a tiny dick because how are you gonna how are you gonna get past the cake? I've always been wondering what it must be like to have like no dick because that I feel like a lot of the serial killers and murderers and rapists and stuff over the years that that's probably a big part of it is that they're all fucked up in the head because they want to they a can't get the sexy girls that they want and they b have such a ridiculously humiliating penis that's, that's all they can think about so they shoot up a that's stool. a good theory don't you think if we were to go and find take the top 10 isis leaders and find out how would we find out what their dick looks like Let's not talk statistics. So let's not talk about how we're going to actually get it done. All I want to do is I want to go. I want to find the top 10 ISIS leaders, uh -huh. pull their pants down. I guarantee that there's not one dick in there that's past six inches hard. But wait, what's their background again? Middle Eastern. They normally have big dicks. Do they? Yeah. Wow. Well, that's actually good to know then. You <laughs> fucked a lot of ISIS members? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so, but <laughs> Middle Eastern. I don't think so, but shit, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> he, ain't in a, he ain't in ISIS, but that dick is the bomb. <laughs> If I was Nicki Minaj, I would say that. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm offending myself. Um, um, God damn. I'm so glad I can't see the chat right now. Um, okay. So, yeah. Kim K. Butt stuff. What else? Do we <laughs> now, my mind is just, the stuff I was planning on saying is now kind of lost because I just got so excited about my Nicki Minaj lyric there. It was good. It was really good. What actually. do you listen to for music? Hip hop. Anyone in particular? Uh, I really like Black Bear. Black Bear? Yeah. That's an interesting person to consider hip-hop, but okay. You don't think so? It's like in its own little genre. It's like L.A. You know who he reminds me of? 
Mickey Avalon back in the day. Oh, man, that is offensive. So <laughs> no shots at Mickey Avalon, <laughs> but I think that was kind of insulting. I th- I'm, and I'm not. It's I, the same genre of music. Yeah, where it's I'm, that. I just LA... think Black Bear is really talented. He's like a really good singer. He's, it's, have you I'm seen just him saying live? It's the same genre. He's incredible live. I love him. Right. I'd fuck him. You would. Yeah, for sure. Does that occur to you? Like, I'm gonna reach out to the superstar rapper. No, because I, like? I have too much of an ego. Mm. I would need you to reach out to me. Really? Yeah. So I if there's anyone chased. out here, if there's anyone out here with more followers than you, you might be down. Well, it doesn't matter about followers. Or more money than you. It doesn't matter. If they have ten million dollars in the bank, you might be down. Honestly, guys with a lot of money are just such a fucking handful. Really? Yeah, they think they can do whatever they want, and you can't do whatever you want. Really? Yeah. Give me an example. What do you mean? Like, have you ever been on the yacht with some real rich guy who just was doing some crazy shit that no, normal people date, wouldn't believe? No, I've definitely dated guys who, you know, fly private and this and that, and they think, like, they can cheat on you or fuck whoever they want, but no, you're dating me. Probably a lot of girls in your position would be willing to endure that. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I can make my own money. Right. So yeah. cheating is a big deal to you? Yeah. If we're in a relationship, Yes. It, would it is it a big deal if you don't find out about it or is it a big deal well if i don't find out about it i don't know but i think it's really disrespectful like and i don't get disrespected but are you the kind of girlfriend who's digging through their phone if you no, feel no, like no, there no, might no. be something going on no but i mean you're flaunting it and shit like that i'm not into it i definitely can't flaunt it yeah yeah, yeah just respect the person you're with or don't be with them mm-hmm. don't be committed then do you ever hook up with mickey avalon no okay it's good to know what was that song my dick no, what's what that? He had, <laughs> he had two good songs. No, what was the Is one? Black Bear gonna be dick. so mad? What was it? Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. But the other one was like my dick. <laughs> <laughs> I remember because I was getting was tattooed. To me, it was the same and genre of music that like L.A. like cocaine rap. Yeah. yeah. That's even what Black Bear's doing. Oh yeah, yeah. Even if he stopped doing cocaine tomorrow, it's still gonna be cocaine rap. Yeah, yeah. I don't even do it drugs, but never. I mean, when I was younger, but I'm just not into it. You but I still like it. the music. Still like the smell of it. The cocaine rap. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Do you think g Easy's cocaine rap? I'm not a fan. Really? No. Wow, I actually went on camera and said that I wasn't a fan <laughs> the other day. But at the same time, he seems like such a nice guy that I didn't even want to say it. It's not. I just don't really like his music. I'm sure he's a great guy. I just I don't really bump any of, any of his music. I like Tory Lanez. I like mm. old school Wayne. Could um, Tory Lanez get it? Because he will literally DM you tomorrow. He's been in my DMs. <laughs> <laughs> he was probably trying to rap battle you, though. Yeah, that was the only reason. <laughs> no, I actually really fuck with Tori and also Tori. Yeah, he was really nice. I, I uh, tagged him in a song, and he was like, oh, cool, thank you. Really? Yeah, but just like that. Oh, it was, but it was like that. It wasn't like, yo, I'm trying to smash. No. Oh, but if, if he was like, yo, I'm trying to smash, would you be like, okay? Is the short thing bad? I mean, he's probably taller than you. Is he? I don't know. I don't even know what he looks like. Really? Yeah. That's a pretty good looking guy. I'm going to be honest, but he's, he's on the shorter side. To me, it's more personality. I'm not like a clout chaser. He's got a lot of personality, too. Does he? Okay, I mean, cool. I, I don't know why if I'm over I here trying to convince with you. To everybody tag Toy Lanez. Tell him Layla's trying to smash. <laughs> she might get a new boyfriend, too, because I'm going to be honest with you. Toy Lanez is probably not going to smash you on your Snapchat. Uh, well then no because that's gonna be on boss up tomorrow it's, it's, it's just gonna be too big now if you can't fuck me on my snap we can't date damn yeah well if you can't battle him then <laughs> i can battle him. Not down. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna want to battle i don't know huh <laughs> no but tory lane's also i'm gonna be honest he the way he got his hairline redone and just talks about it and doesn't give a shit and makes jokes about it makes me want to do it fuck it so if you see me with a nice hairline and i don't have a hat on you have I'm, a good hairline huh mm. That's not bad. You still have hair. Yeah, I mean, I have hair. It's just really the front is the focal point. I've seen way worse. Oh, yeah, definitely. I've seen way worse, too. But, I mean, his shit was fucked up, and now was it's it? good. Yeah. I don't know. I have mm. to look back on pictures. But I don't know. Like, I mean, for him, it's like a different thing. Yeah. He's got a different haircut that he's committed to for the rest of his life, probably, you know? Probably, it's yeah. Probably not, they're probably not going to give me the same hairs that they gave him. No. No. Yeah. That's a big no-no. Um, <laughs> okay, so what else should we talk about? What are you excited about in your life at this point? Um, buying a condo soon. Really? Yeah, adult shit. What kind of area are you trying to move to? WeHo. Well, I live in WeHo, but I'm buying in WeHo. Okay. Yeah. So you can't be one of those girls all the way out there in the valley? I can't do the valley. It sucks your soul out. Can't really? Yeah. It sucks your soul out. How yeah. so? I, people would say that West Hollywood sucks your soul out. In a better way. Fucking boring over there. Oh, I completely agree. It's boring as hell. I can't do it. 
Really? No. I know you can get so much more for your money, but all I do is spend money on food and working out. Let me live and buy a fucking overpriced condo in West Hollywood. Right. Yeah. But if you're so concerned about money and you don't seem like you're being super social, why not just move Like the there? vibe here. I like going and sitting at overpriced coffee shops and people watching. I like going to Erewhon, spending mm. all my money on the healthy food there. That's the culture right there. It's the whole experience. I don't know. I'm into it. It's no. what I'm into. Instead of going out to the club, I'm going to Erewhon and spin class and Pilates and just, I love West Hollywood. Do you think you have to stay obsessed with working out in order to like stay high quality in the industry into your 30s? Because no. that's one thing I think I notice about every girl that is still working into their like mid 30s is that they're all workout nuts. Uh, it just depends on what's trendy. Like when I first started porn, it was like super skinny girls that didn't eat anything and nobody worked out. Mm -hmm. So that's what I looked like. Now it's like thicker girls who do work out and lift. That's what I do. Do you think that the the porn stereotype or the, the types of things that people are casting now is a little healthier? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. The model industry in general, I think. I like the fact that we discussed that the porn industry is crumbling because of the Snapchat industry. <laughs> <laughs> How long till they all start trying to get their own chunk of it, though? That's the question. Oh, they already have. Really? They all have their own Snapchats now. Mm. Browsers has their own. Pornhub has their own. And they have girls take over. And they're also, you know, having premiums as well. So they're trying to get their money's worth, too. Right. I mean, who knows how long Snapchat is going to stay around. But even so, I'll still have content and use it as, like, an uploading videos. It doesn't have to be on Snapchat. It just gave me the key of, like, here's what you do. You have your own shit. You already have a big enough name. I can make all my own stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't need to shoot for companies. Right. I already have the name. So. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like... Whatever come well, like think about how musicians used to sell their music and who's getting a chunk of that. The record label, the the record store, mm -hmm. et cetera. There's all these like in betweens that are like gobbling up a chunk of the money. Mm -hmm. Now these artists, you know, some of them still sign to labels and stuff, but they're basically just selling straight to consumer and the only person really taking a chunk of it is Apple. Yeah. So it used to be this little store, this record label, et cetera. Now it's, no, the biggest tech company in the world is the only other person seeing a percentage of your sales on music. Yeah, it's amazing. Besides the labels, which yeah. usually so there's a label. Yeah. But, I mean, it is kind of crazy. But it's such a th – this really bothers me, too. And it says a lot about the, the changing face of the Internet is that in the early days of the Internet, I remember there used to be a lot more regular websites that would have porn ads because it was like, oh, porn ads make money. Mm -hmm. It's hard to find ads that – make money so we're going to put porn ads on our website blah 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 this is the future of the internet etc cetera, etc cetera. instead we've seen like real attempts i think by the big tech monopolies like facebook and apple and stuff to like exterminate porn from their platforms to the extent where like you know if you search uh, certain porn terms on google and stuff they're like heavily down ranked oh, wow. stuff like that i didn't know that well um, i've heard it from certain sources i'm not 100 percent sure if it's always accurate but i mean it just i think it's such a shame like think about tumblr tumblr was a nice place where you could I still i didn't even know where porn was on tumblr where was i living really no i didn't tons know. of porn on there i remember when i used to look at it it was always be tons of porn and then slowly the game changed and then the reason why they took why tumblr had to remove porn was because there was enough porn on it that apple was just like no we don't want this in our app store and if if the Tumblr app's not going to be in the app store, then the Tumblr app is just going to fucking... Well, I don't know how it worked exactly, but I think that most of these places are just, you can't uh, filter out who's 18 and older and younger. So I think that was, that's the main problem. But that's crazy too, to me, because I mean, don't you assume that there's probably a lot of like child porn being uploaded to Facebook and Twitter. They take measures to delete it. Mm -hmm. Like why wasn't Tumblr doing or capable of doing yeah, the same I thing? I didn't even know there was porn on there. I'm missing out on life. No, I, I didn't know about it, but it turns out there's a lot of girls like making a living off Tumblr too. Like that's where they were sort of carrying out their Snapchat girl. Mm. Move it. You just keep it moving. Wherever okay, Snapchat gets taken down, keep it moving. Next one, next one, next one. But we cannot trust Snapchat. We can't. One day they're just gonna yeah. fold. It doesn't matter. I still have all the content. I'll just upload it to my own platform. Who cares? Yeah, but what, what's really gonna get dark is when uh, Twitter eventually decides that there can't be like sex on there anymore. I don't really even use Twitter that much. Really. Mm. Well, it's coming. I believe that this is just a matter of time. It's just got to be the it's right level of outcry. It's all just evolution. Okay, on to the next. Thank you. Next. Maybe, but they're shadow banning motherfuckers too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. 
So what do you want to have the people out there check out before you uh, have to go? What do you what do you want to definitely promote? check out my public Snapchat because that's where I post what I'm doing all day long. So that is Layla Star Snap. OK, yeah. that's that's check the hub. That's the hub. And your Instagram is Layla Star TM. It is. What's TM? Trademark because somebody took my fucking name. OK. Yeah. So I was just wondering. I'm like TM. TM. Till I get it back one day, hopefully. <laughs> okay. Well, shout out to everybody who watched this. Uh, much, much love to Layla. We've been working on this for a while. Yeah, I've been flaky, huh? Nah, it's all right. And throughout the course <laughs> of throughout the course of preparing for this interview, I realized that it's L E L A, not L A Y L A, right, which right. I was sort of L E L A. I was never sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank it was you amazing for having, having you on. Me. And to everybody at home watching the stream, do not leave. I will be back momentarily. We're going to end this right now, and then I will be back on the stream briefly to communicate with you guys. Rub gang. Peace.